Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Atisha. In this video of the Vision OS series, we are going to learn how to add static 3D models to Windows in our Vision OS app. If you have been following me throughout this series, you by now would know that window present a 2D screen, but to make it a bit more interesting, we have a way to add static 3D models to our windows using the model 3D API from Reality Kit. So let's go to Xcode and see how we can implement it in our project. So we will be using the same project that we had created in the second video of the series where we learned how to build our first Vision OS app. This is how it looks. We have a navigation link over here, which when clicked takes us to this view, which tells us more about Gramophone. So here we'll add a static 3D model of Gramophone to make it a bit more interesting. But before that, we have to download the 3D model of Gramophone. So the model 3D API that we are going to use embeds a 3D model from a USD file or a reality file. So we'll be using a USDZ format, which is based on the USD framework, and it stands for Universal Scene Description Zip. It is a single self-contained uh, file format that is used to display 3D model in our Apple devices, and it is really very easy to use and share. So uh, we can get these USDZ file from Apple built-in assets. We can buy them from the marketplaces like Sketchfab. Also, we have the option to convert other 3D file format to this one using certain tools. And we can capture our own 3D models, which are based on the USDZ format using the Apple object capture. So for now, we'll be downloading it from the Apple website. So here we have a few options. So right now we'll be using this one. So if you click on it, it automatically gets downloaded. And uh, for having this, we will get it inside our project. Okay, so I've put this gramophone.usdc file in my project folder. This is how it looks. In order to use it in our Vision OS app, we first have to import Reality Kit. So that I've already done. Secondly, what we want to show is to the right of this text, we want to have the 3D model. So let's embed this V stack within a H stack. And here we will use the model 3D. So this model 3D takes in three parameters. First is named, where we have to specify the name of the USDZ file. Second is the content closure, which takes in the resolve model 3D and in return gives a view. Third is a placeholder. And so until the view loads, uh, we can show something to the user. So let's use this one. So here you have to pass in the exact name of the file. So let's write gramophone. Once this model 3D API is able to load this particular USDZ file, it in return gives us a resolved model 3D. So let's call it model and we can then present it to the user. Third, as a placeholder, we will use a progress view. Now let's see how it looks like. So if we click on tell me more about gramophone, okay, we can see something like this. This is looking a bit absurd. So let's add some modifiers. Let's give it a resizable property, which resize this particular image according to the available space. And we will also set the aspect ratio to fit. Okay. Now let's run this on the simulator and see how it looks like. So let's click on this, tell me more about gramophone. You can see there was a loader initially. So until the model loads, we were able to see a progress view. And as it loads, we are able to now see this gramophone. This gramophone has got a new uh, dimension that is depth. And it seems like it is coming out of the Z axis, though it's still a static 3D model. We also have a way to add these type of uh, 3D model using a URL. So instead of passing this name, we also have an initializer in, in this model 3D where we can pass the URL. So let's see how we can do that. Let me copy this one only and comment this out. So instead of this name, we'll pass the URL and we will use this one since URL is going to be a string. We are going to copy this uh, link, co uh, link address of this particular gramophone model 3D and paste it over here. Rest of the thing are going to remain the same. Let's see how it is working. Okay, one thing that we have to take care over here is, since we are using a URL, we can either force unwrap it or we can use a guarded statement. Since I'm not uh, having this link from an API call or something like that, so I'm just force unwrapping it. Uh, now let's see how it looks like. If we click on this, 
you can see that there is a progress view until this model 3d is able to load the uh, 3d model from this particular url that we have provided and as soon as it gets that it is able to show this gramophone on the window now one problem with the current approach is in case uh, this url is not working or for example your internet connection is not working fine or the name that you have passed to this is incorrect in that case the user will be shown the progress view infinitely let's see uh, what i'm trying to say over here for example let's say you put the incorrect url over here now if you click on this you can see that there is a loader and this progress view will be shown infinitely there is no way uh, we can show an error message to the user so to gain more control over this loading process we have another initializer that we can use so let me quickly show you this particular one we have this initializer wherein we have three parameters that we have to pass first is the url that is going to remain the same the second is a transaction uh, for this particular pre project we do not need a transaction this is basically used to pass animation between views so we are not going to use this the third is a content closure which takes in a model 3d phase and in return gives the content let's see what this model 3d phase is so this model 3D phase is basically an enum which has three cases. One is empty, second is success and third is failure. So when the model has not been loaded, in that case, we have this empty value. If the model has loaded successfully, it gives us this success case and in return gives us this resolved model 3D, which we basically require. And in case of failure, we can show the error. So in order to use this enum, we can either use a switch statement or we can use if else. Let's use switch statement for now. Let me comment this one again. Now we are going to use this model 3D, which has the URL transaction and the content. So for passing the URL, let's use the previous one that we had. Uh, we are not going to use transaction. So let me remove this and here it is going to give us the phase. So let's call it phase itself and we can use a switch statement. So we'll switch the phases. So you can see we have empty success and failure. In case it is empty, we want to show the progress view just like how we were showing earlier. In case of success, it is giving us this resolved model 3D. Let's call it model itself and use it in the same manner we had initially. Third, in case of error, we can show the localized description of the error to the user. So we will write it as a, we'll show it as a text and uh, we will show the error. So it's going to be error dot localized description. Also to highlight this error, we can give it a font weight of bold and uh, change its color to red so that it's clearly visible. So I will use this foreground style and I'll assign it a color of red. Also switch statement, it's giving us a warning that in case of switch statement, we also should uh, handle unknown values as well. So let me fix this. And in this case, I will just show the text that unknown error now let's run this on the simulator and see okay, when i click on this tell me more about gramophone a progress view is shown and as soon as it is loaded our gramophone 3d model is appearing uh, let's try to make some error in this url and see if uh, if we are getting the this error text or not so let's say if i change its name to something else and run it again now when i click on this you can see uh, we were initially shown a loader, but as soon as it realized that it has got some error, our error is getting displayed. So this is a good idea uh, to show the error instead of just showing the progress view so as to tell the user that there is some error in the backend. One great thing about this model 3D API is we can also add animations and gesture to our 3D model as well. If you want to learn how to add, say, a rotation 3D effect or a gesture to this particular 3D model, you can let me know in the comments. I'll make a separate video on that. So in this video, we have covered the three major initializers of model 3D and uh, you can see how easy it is to mix the 2D and the 3D content with the model 3D API. That's majorly it about this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the reality kits model 3d api and 
how to use it in our Vision OS app. In the next video of the series, uh, we will add an actual 3D experience with volume and we will also see how we can place a volume and a window together in our Vision OS app. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future.